Hey everyone, thanks for sticking around. Um, I'm aware it's bank holiday Sunday and there are several cheap pubs in the vicinity. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to talk about why I think memory may hold the key for curing drug addiction. Um, first, I'd like to tell you about a fun game that you can use to wind up your family and friends. Um, some of you have probably already heard of this before, but it goes like this. The game is, whenever you think about the game, you lose the game. Okay, whenever you lose the game, you have to say the words, I just lost the game out loud. If that makes anyone else think of the game, then they also lose the game. And the play continues indefinitely. And people have called it pointless and infuriating, which is maybe why I like it so much. But uh, I think it tells us some important things about memory. First of all, we're really good at learning new information, but we're absolutely terrible at controlling when that information pops up. And our brains are really reluctant to let that information go once it's learned. So there's no real way to win the game ever. You're stuck playing it as long as you know about it. But some things you can do if you can't win is uh, screw over other people and make them lose more. One tactic you can employ to do that is set up uh, reminder triggers for people uh, so that they remember the game. And if you're clever, uh, you can use something very uh, irritating and prevalent uh, in order to set up those reminders like this. For anyone thinking who that guy is, that's Jason Terrell Taylor, a.k.a. The Game, uh, famous rap star. You notice he, look, he looks absolutely fuming there, which I can only assume is because he's just lost the game. <laughs> <clears throat> so we learn new memories when our neurons fire at the same time. So by showing you that slide, your iPhone ringtone neurons are firing at the same time as your neurons that encode the game. Whenever that happens, new connections form between those neurons, and that's the basis of a new memory. Now, initially, that's slightly unstable, but over the next few hours, your brain's going to be making new proteins which are going to stabilise that memory. And if it enters uh, your long-term memory stores, that means you're basically stuck with it for life. <laughs> These guys, uh, Ivan Pavlov and B.F. Skinner, uh, understood the propensity for all animals to learn this way. Um, basically, every animal with a central nervous system uses this kind of associative learning to guide its behaviour. And that makes sense if you think about how important it is for survival to be able to predict where rewards are coming from or predict where danger is going to come from uh, before it's too late. And so it's understandable that once we learn, uh, brains are reluctant to give up memories because you never know when it's going to be absolutely crucial to saving your life in the future. So the only thing that really stops us being slaves to our memory processes, given that we can't control when we remember or forget, is the uh, inhibition that we can exert over our responses queued up by those memories. And that's exactly what goes wrong in drug addiction. So addictive drugs like cigarettes all tap into the brain's reward motivational pathways. And they release things like dopamine, which is shown here on the right. What that does is make those behaviours uh, reinforcing and more likely to be repeated. Now, initially that can be controlled, which is why people don't become addicted to drugs immediately. But because uh, our brains are hardwired to learn about things that predict rewards, things in the environment, like for smokers, cigarette packets or lighters, uh, become associated with that drug-taking response. And then whenever they're encountered in the environment in the future, they gear it up. And every time someone smokes, all those pathways get reinforced. And the more they're reinforced, the less people are able to control that behaviour. So eventually we see control fade away and people are stuck in the addiction cycle of continued relapse. Because we know memories are relatively permanent once they're made, that's why we have such a poor prognosis for drug addicts. And those memories are driving these patterns of maladaptive behaviour that we need to break people out of if we're really serious about one day uh, finding a cure for addiction. So how do you stop a memory controlling a behaviour? Well, one way we've tried in our lab is to create competition between different memories. So an alcoholic will have a pretty strong association between the sight of a pint of beer and the response of drinking. And we've tried to get them to associate the sight of that same pint of beer with the response of not drinking. Um, we basically tried to do that by getting people into the lab on a hot sunny day and sitting them down in front of a nice cold pint of beer, telling them that they can look at it and pick it up and smell it but not drink it, which clearly made them uh, pretty furious. But it, <laughs> it also worked in the short term um, to reduce their cravings and motivation for that drink. The problem is it has absolutely no transference into the long term, and that's because no matter how much training you do in the lab, those memories are never going to be as strong or as well reinforced as the original drug memories. 
So it didn't look particularly good for addicts, and that's why treatment hasn't really uh, improved anyone's outcomes, particularly in the last few years. But then in 2000, this guy, uh, Karim Nader, put on his, put on his special paradigm-shifting hat and uh, <laughs> did an experiment in rats. He trained them to fear a tone, essentially, by associating it with a uh, shock to the foot, like exactly the same kind of learning that I did uh, with the iPhone ringtone. So once that was well learned, he then got them to remember the memory by playing the tone, which sort of made the, the rats freeze up. Uh, and then he injected their brains with a drug that stops their, bra their brains making new proteins. When he tested them later, over a couple of weeks, he found that all traces of the original learning were gone. That went completely against what people thought they knew about memory, because once you make memories, they're supposed to be really robust and permanent. But what the last 10 years of research have told us is that every time we recall a memory, uh, it can potentially become unstable, and then it has to go through an active process of restabilization. Uh, requiring certain neurotransmitters and genes being switched on and proteins being made. And this can potentially happen all the time. <clears throat> and it happens to exactly the kind of drugs memories that are um, driving relapse in drug addicts. So what this means is that because we've got drugs that can interfere with these processes, if we can reactivate those drug memories in addicts, then we potentially now have a target that we can use to break people out of the addiction cycle. Two such drugs uh, that have been shown to have these effects in rats are already used in humans. Ironically, memantine is an Alzheimer's drug, um, which is characterised as a, a disease with memory impairments. Um, Propanolol is uh, antihypertensive, and by using this kind of protocol in rats, they've been able to basically erase these uh, drug memories. Now, I'm aware that rats aren't just very little people as much as scientists would like to think so. Um, so maybe the conclusions we can draw on uh, from this are limited. But uh, similar treatments have been used uh, for trauma patients uh, in post-traumatic stress disorder um, using this exact kind of protocol and have found pretty startling results. People have been able to overcome their traumas after years of um, their lives being ruined by it. So I'm currently running the first study in human addicts to see if we can use this kind of protocol. Um, we're getting smokers into the lab who are looking to quit and we're reactivating the kind of memories that would normally drive them into relapse um, by showing them reminders like this. If we can get these drugs to block those memory processes, processes we should see a massive drop-off in relapse rates over the years that we follow them up. Um, and I'm hopeful that this is going to work, but obviously it's not going to be a fully-fledged cure for addiction uh, as it is, and it'll take a lot of refinement before it can be used in the clinic. But what I think is that as our understanding of this reconsolidation memory process deepens and uh, the interest from pharma companies, good or bad, in developing these drugs uh, to interfere with these processes um, becomes greater, within the next few years, we're going to see human beings develop the capacity to selectively erase and rewrite memories, which is maybe quite a scary prospect. Uh, but for me, from maybe quite an optimistic point of view, it means that for the first time in human history, maybe we have the opportunities to break down the memories that are forcing people into the addiction cycle. If we can do that, we can put the control and the quality of life back in. It also means that one day there may be a way to win the game. And it may be as simple as taking a pill and losing one last time. Thank you.